In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I picked up this magnificent race bike behind me here for $1,800 USD. Additionally, I'm gonna share all the numbers with you so we have clarity. I'll link to them below and I'm gonna share them with you at the end of this video. And I'm also gonna expose a little altercation that I got into with my wife who's recently taken up road cycling as well. You see, she's got an event coming up this Sunday and so do I, and we only have one set of MV 6.7s. But hey, if you've just landed on this channel, this is where I do weekly cycling videos, including this vlog series that I'm running, which is all about mixing bike racing with busy family, crazy family lifestyle. And I'm also gonna be giving away a road bike to a lucky subscriber a week before Christmas this year. So if all that sounds up your alley, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing below. So I've had some constructive feedback on the channel. Start reviewing some more affordable road bikes, you absolute dickhead. That's right, I'm starting to get some pretty good hate mail on this channel at the moment, but from what I understand, that means the channel is on the right track. But to be fair to those people, I have been reviewing road bikes in between sort of the 10 to $15,000 category, and to be honest, most people, or many people, cannot afford road bikes in that category, nor myself. In fact, I'm on a very strict play money budget at the moment and I had a need or I have a need to obtain a road bike that is better suited to road race a bit more all round you see I've got a chapter 2 rare ray and also an LA sprint behind this bike but they're more criterion specific they don't tick a few boxes when it comes to all round so I took my strict budget and I started to do some research now you see initially I thought because I had such a strict budget I would replace the frame on the LA and keep all the components and sell the frame off and get myself a nice new frame. But after doing some research, speaking to some local bike shops, I managed to stumble across this giant TCR, which you'll see behind me. Now I've swapped out the wheels, much to the dismay of my wife, who was originally intending on using them in an upcoming triathlon event she has this Sunday. We've been training for this one for months. But the other wheels are good. No, the other wheels are good though. Then, that's relative. Come, come, come let's have a conversation in. about come this. I'm, no. This is bullshit. <laughs> and you're going to publicise this. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> and look, she may just still win the battle. But what we have all around here is the giant TCR advanced frame that is the exact same frame that is currently used within the professional Peloton. Currently by the Triple C or CCC team, and in the past it's been Team Sunweb. We have Shimano Altegra Mechanical, which is robust, reliable, and one of my all time favorite group sets. We have rim brakes, which have worked so well for decades and don't make any irritating noises. And MV 6.7 tubulars and a giant contact SL cockpit and saddle. And I even walked away with two water bottle cages and a bell. Now there's a bit of a story behind this road bike behind me here, so let's hear from the local bike shop where I purchased it from. So Andrew, I've just bought a cracking giant TCR off you. Yeah, yep. Can you tell me how did it come about to be at this price? Yeah, yeah, look, the original owner, he just fell in love with the componentry and we get customers that, that look, you know, target componentry or they target carbon. There's certain things in this price range that we find they target. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even like the colour of the bike. It's right. all about, okay, I want Altegra, or I want carbon. Yep. So this started out with the guy that fell in love with the group sets, yes. the wheels, and from there, you know, as technology changes, well then he decided to move on to something else. So he traded it in? So he traded it in, yeah. Yeah, right. And as a result, how old is it? It's about a year old. Yeah, yeah it's, it hasn't done a lot of riding at all. Yeah, right. And what was the original retail price on it? Uh, four, four, nine, nine. And what have I got it for? You have got it for two, two. Yeah. Zero, zero. <laughs> That's pretty good. And because I've bought it through you, does that mean I still get a warranty and service through you? Yeah, it does, yeah. We, and we've just registered our, in our system. Yeah, okay. So then that way that you have all the warranty that this has started out Peace with. of mind, anything goes wrong, yeah. I can bring it back. That's for sure. That's yeah. for sure. So there's a little bit more 
to this story when it comes to the actual bike because it's actually, while it was purchased in 2018 as a brand new bike, it's actually a 2016 mid-season release from Giant. Now, the mid-season releases apparently sort of come just before they release their next range, so just before the 2017s came out. And this bike was purchased or put on lay-by and sat in the bike shop for about six to eight months and that person never actually followed through. So they put it back on the shop floor for sale and somebody eventually purchased it in 2018. So in terms of usage, it's only had about 12, maybe 18 months worth of usage. I can't be exact, but the benefit is I've bought it from a local bike shop, so I've got the warranty and I've got somewhere I can take it back. But the thing is, 2016, mid-2016, or essentially just before 2017, seems like a long time ago, but the actual frame, that SL frame, is the exact same frame that is utilized by the pros today. The 2020 Giant TCRs have not changed outside of being disc. So there are some slight variations just to accommodate disc brakes, but the actual geometry, the layup, the makeup, of the road bike is exactly the same and I've got the same bike for $1,800 USD. Yes, it's got Ultegra. Yes, it doesn't have the most amazing carbon fiber cockpit. Yes, the wheels are secondhand, but it's not gonna be the difference between me winning and losing a bike race. 100% not. I've got no excuses with a bike that's $1,800. Pretty phenomenal. And I think it just goes to show if you can spend a bit of time doing your research as I have done, and if you could potentially do it through a local bike shop so you get that guarantee where I can take it back, there's warranty there. I think you're gonna walk away a pretty happy camper. So the numbers, the whole bike cost me $2,200 AUD. That's not including these MV 6.7 wheels, which I'll explain how they came about shortly. It came with the giant SLR1 carbon wheels, and by all accounts, they're a pretty good carbon fiber rim. Now I'm gonna keep both the giant wheels and also the MV 6.7s because now both my wife and I ride, I think there is a need for us to have two carbon fiber rims or two sets of carbon fiber rims in the same family. But hypothetically speaking, if I wanted to, I could sell the giant wheels online secondhand and they're going for around about $1,000 at the moment. But let's be conservative and say I sold them for $700 AUD. Now I purchased the MV 6.7 tubulars off a mate secondhand for $1,200 AUD. So let's take $2,200 AUD, complete bike, less $700 back for the giant wheels, add $1,200 for the MVs and then we're left I'm sorry I'm having to work this all out in AUD because that's the way the transactions happened. $2,700 AUD, which works out to be just a smidge over $1,800 USD for a pretty phenomenal complete race bike. And it kind of begs the question, I've had a lot of requests on the channel to get an Alibaba cheap Chinese frame and do a review on that. I don't really see the need or the point when I can buy a very well-respected giant TCR and have the peace of mind that I can take it back to a local bike shop if there are any issues for under two grand USD. If you've got any stories similar to mine, I'd love to hear them below and I'll catch you in the next video.